You're with Scott Quigg, the former junior featherweight champion. Now, Scott, you're here training at the Carson Gym. Uh, I ran into Liam Smith. I ran ran into Michael Collin. Uh, of course, Jason Quigg, who I know very well, trains out here. We got a lot of great UK fighters training at the Carson Gym in California. Talk to us why you're training out here in the States. Uh, it's the quality, of the, quality of the work you get here. You know, it's, you know, to get to the in my in my opinion to get to the top you've got to come out and you've got you've got to surround yourself with you know world class fighters every day and coming over across the pond out here to the states you know you come into different gyms and for, for instance the, the gym that we're in now look at the quality the, that's in there you know so it can only bring you on you can only improve so that's why a lot of you know the UK fighters are coming out here and, and I think that's why we're doing so well at the minute you know in Britain with these a lot of world champions and it's because we're all improving yeah there's a lot of great champions in the UK now let's talk about a familiar name Carl Frampton uh, he recently just fought against Leo Santa Cruz in a rematch it was a great fight it was probably one of the best fights I've seen in a while did you have Leo Santa Cruz winning that fight yeah to be honest with you I, I it weren't as uh, it weren't as good as uh, as exciting as the first, the first fight. One, yeah, yeah. The, I think the first the first fight was a, uh, more of a, an exciting fight. I thought Santa Cruz boxed the perfect fight. You know, he he went out there and from start to finish, he thought he controlled it. I had I scored it eight rounds to four, maybe nine rounds to three to Santa Cruz. I thought he was really uh, boxed a really good fight behind that jab and let his hands go when he wanted to and then got behind the stick again and I thought he, he had um, Frampton's number at the weekend right. just gone so it was but if they fought again it could be different you know the first fight I thought uh, Frampton was comfortable I thought he won the fight comfortable but I did think it was going to be different this time because Santa Cruz would have had a smoother camp his, his dad was a lot healthier he didn't have you know that issue to deal with and I was this was the Santa Cruz that I thought was going to turn up to the first fight now you fought Carl Frampton with a broken jaw I believe that broke what somewhere around the third or fourth round I mean that takes tremendous heart <laughs> and a lot of guts to go the full 12 rounds what did you learn in that fight uh, and do you want that rematch I'll always want that rematch um, but what I learned was to never neglect the basic punch in boxing which is the jab so the, the early rounds you know, nothing really much happened yet if I would have been using my jab I would have looked like I was in control I would have right. looked like you know, I was the busier fighter and so you know, I neglected the, one of the basic fundamentals of boxing um, and not only that we got we got the tactics wrong early on we started a bit slow but as the fight wore, wore on and when I started doing what I do best you know I changed the fight but it was um, a bit late yeah. Let's not forget, Leo Santa Cruz was able to get revenge. So it's very possible that if you get that rematch, you can get your revenge. I 100% believe I can beat him. And, I, and I, know, I will know I'll beat him next time. You know, obviously, we've just got to get the rematch. I've got to concentrate on me, um, keep doing what I'm doing. Like I say, I'm out here now training, improving, getting better as a fighter. And I keep winning. That rematch will, right. will I'm sure it'll happen. Here's an interesting fact about you. If I asked you what you ate on April 21st of 2012, you can go back on a little book that you have written down with the history of everything you've ever consumed in your last couple of, what, five, six years, ten years? Wait, I think it's going back <laughs> six years now. Okay. Six years, yeah. But it's true, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you ask me a day in the, in the last six years, I can tell you what I did in training to what I ate um, that's just something that I started, I started doing and because I know how I start camp you know if, I, if I've been out and I've been eating a lot of garbage yeah then I'll know why you know and for instance when I'm in training camp sometimes you might have flat days and then you go back and this is normally the time when I have a flat day because of all the workload we've been doing so it gives you 
you know, just give it, listen, it's not like anything. You know, you can always go back and check, but it just gives you a foundation that, you know, what what you're doing is right. Um, if you if something's not been going right, then you know why. So it's just a bit of a log that I, I do, and it's just, I think, now I do it, and I keep doing it because it's just an habit. Yeah. You know, it's an habit. I've got into a routine of doing it, and I, and I believe it helps. How soon can we expect you inside that ring? 29th of April. And who's the opponent? Uh, that'll be on the Joshua Klitschko card at Wembley. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, that's a big uh, event. Then. Yeah, yeah. 9,000 um, plus fans. Yeah, so it's not a bad uh, it's not a bad stage to be on. Um, we're still working on an opponent. We're trying to we're trying to get um, an eliminator for the WBA uh, World okay. Title. Who, you know, now we'll do by Santa Cruz. So we're trying to get an eliminator for that. And the fight's gonna be at 122 or 126. Oh no, 126. 126. I think my, my 122 days are gone. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about the Tony Bella fight? I think it's a good fight. Um, so back home anyway, there's a lot of interest in it. Um, you think Tony Bell is too small uh, to compete against a uh, heavier, bigger? You no, know, on paper, yeah. You know, um, I think you look at what David Day has done. I've, I've seen a, a few clips of David Day at the minute training. He looks he uh, very ex- more athletic. Yeah, he looks uh, very explosive. Uh, he looks fast. He looks trimmed down. Uh, but Tony Blue can punch. Yeah. So if he can land the shot on A, I believe he can knock him out. But uh, he's going to be a tough, it's a tough ass. Yeah, and there, there's a lot of great fights in the UK. Uh, people have been talking about Amir Khan versus Kel Brook. That's a fight that we all want to see. Unfortunately, it looks like it's not going to materialize, but they talk about Kel Brook versus Errol Spence yeah, at 147. Yeah, it, it, that's a very dangerous fight for Kel Brook. I think Errol Spence is a very, very good fighter and he's only getting better. I think... Kelbrook making 147 takes a lot out of him. I think you see a, when Kelbrook fights at 147, you're seeing a 65, 70% Kelbrook that I think he does need to move up to 154 and you'll see the yeah. best of him. Uh, so with with Brook making one for, with the Spence fight being at 147, it's a very, very dangerous fight. Hey, what about another big showdown with you versus Lee Selby? That's another fight that'd be, you know, definitely a chance to jump back. No, he's a, Lee Selby's been out here a few times. He's another one you got to respect as a fighter. He, he takes himself away, comes over here quite a lot, um, trying to better himself, getting the quality sparring. Um, so yeah, that's a, definitely a fight that I'd be more than interested in. One of my final questions, uh, can you give us your thought on Michael Collin as a fighter and his future? Uh, Michael, his talent speaks for itself. Do you know, he was, the finger speaks for itself. I, I was going to say, yeah. yeah, yeah um, I'm going to say he needs to trade my that finger. <laughs> you, know, you know, the thing is, I asked him, I said, if you won the gold medal, you think you'd be as popular as you are now? And he's like, nope, I think giving that middle finger did yeah, it Yeah, oh, <laughs> definitely, I, I agree with you, you know, listen, he's, he's talent, you know, unbelievable, and, and he's a dedicated lad, he trains hard, he's... He's going to go all the way. As long as he keeps focus, keeps his feet on the ground. Listen, and being in a gym like this, he's only going to keep your feet on the ground and just yeah. make you come in every day and get better and better. Um, but no doubt he'll become world champion and he'll have a long reigning, you know, successful time at the top. Where can they follow you on social media? You can follow me um, on Twitter at Scott Quigg and on Instagram um, Scott Quigg again. All right. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all the support that I get, and you know, I'll be back at the top soon. All right. Well, we'll be watching on the undercard of uh, AJ versus Pushko. Looking forward to it. Thank you and good luck to you, my man. No, thank you. Thank you.